fittingly, Alonzo and I do not totally agree <laughs> on civil war. It was destined to happen. Can are you Texas? Can this divided stand? <laughs> right. Are you Florida? Am I California? I don't know. Um, but we don't agree on this movie, and I think it's going to be very, very divisive, very polarizing. The latest from Alex Garland. If you've not subscribed to us yet at Breakfast All Day, we'd love it, because this kind of movie right here is our bread and butter. Any, like, A24 auteur, your Ari Asters of the world, we will always make sure we get to this as soon as we possibly can. This movie opens on Friday, so we're doing an early review for you. We'd love to have you come along. Alonzo, what happens in the Civil War? You don't know what side they're fighting for. Someone's trying to kill us. We are trying to kill them. So, in an unnamed year, uh, a civil war has broken out in America. There's a coalition of uh, Texas and California, because those two states get along so well, uh, known as the Western Federation, with apparently some assistance from Florida, up against the United States government, which is currently being run by President Nick Offerman. We don't know a lot about him, but we do know he's a third-term president. Uh, he disbanded the FBI, and he ordered airstrikes on his own people. So... You know, these things happen. Uh, we follow a group of journalists, uh, principally uh, Kirsten Dunst as a grizzled veteran photojournalist who is traveling with a group of folks, including Kaylee Spaney, who you may remember from Priscilla last year as a wide-eyed newbie who wants to follow in uh, Kirsten Dunst's footsteps. They are making their way from uh, New York City, which is torn up by riots, uh, down to D.C. because they want to get an elusive interview with the president. Um, along for the ride is a, a, a print journalist named Joel, played by Wagner Mora, and a venerable New York Times journalist, uh, played by veteran actor Stephen McKinley Henderson. Yes. And uh, adventures ensue. This is not a political film at all, which nope. struck me as strange for a film called Civil War opening in 2024. We don't really get an idea of who the sides are or what they want. We just know that, like, Offerman is bad and now there are secessionists. And uh, it, it to me, that kind of reduced this movie to, like, the first purge, not the first purge but the first movie of the purge, purge series movie. the purge <laughs> where mm -hmm. they you know it's like oh okay a, a super right-wing government has taken over and once a year like you know crime is you know not punishable and da 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 and like oh well that's a cool premise i want to see what that world looks like and then the first movie is entirely set inside one house so i was like okay so this whole civil war thing is a fascinating backdrop here i want to know more about what's going on no this is a story about photojournalists uh, <laughs> and so uh, to me, it just feels sort of like a missed opportunity because what you wind up with is a movie that you could have just set in like, oh, you know, Afghanistan or some war torn part of the world where a veteran photojournalist and a, and, and a young would be, you know, camera uh, person sort of, you know, have this experience together and go on this dangerous road trip. Ultimately, this kind of boils down to the same plot as like All Quiet on the Western Front or any number of World War II movies where you have the the, the wide-eyed greenhorn and the grizzled veteran and, you know, in the crucible of war, the greenhorn, you know, comes into their own and the, you know, the veteran perhaps finds some redemption. You know, uh, Dunst's character is haunted by nightmares of the horrific visions that she's photographed over the years. And thanks to Alex Garland, we get to see those visions too. It's very um, graphic. It's very violent. Yeah. yeah. The battle sequences are impressive. You know, the, 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 all the press screenings they had for us last night were in IMAX and I saw it at the Chinese, which is, you know, mm -hmm. huge. And um, the actual, you know, the nitty gritty of it being a war movie definitely delivers, whether it's, you know, uh, combat in the streets, whether it's a mass grave that is being tended to by a terrifying Jesse Plemons. Those moments really deliver. But I, I feel like this movie is cheating us of the context of what the war is really about. And so not knowing that it kind of renders, I think, a lot of the big moments later on sort of like, well, how do I feel about this outside of the photojournalists and 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 it seems like that's a really elaborate scaffolding for that story i disagree totally okay 
I think you cannot have specific ideology or policy in a movie like this. And I think it was such a wise choice of Alex Garland to not specify they are fighting about X, Y, Z, because that's not what it's about. It's about what would happen if the rifts that exist within our society as we know it were to get to that extreme. I, I do think this is in a slightly futuristic setting. There's a conversation that Kelly Spaney and Kirsten Dunst have where it gives a bit of Kirsten Dunst character's backstory. In college, she shot that incredible Antifa photo. The Antifa massacre or something, yeah. So I think that puts out. us like maybe 20 years in the future, I, I would guess. Perhaps. Um, and because she's now and in her mid forties, very now, you know, right? And but you know, society has fallen apart. So who knows sure. what's happened to manufacturing? So he is in a no-win situation, Alex Garland. If he pins himself to they're fighting for this, they're fighting for this, because then it's a who's right and who's wrong. It's automatically going to be polarizing and potentially alienating to half of your audience. And so if you make it about this, you know, amorphous thing in terms of ideology, you can reach everyone with what is really powerful here. And that is the strength of the visuals, the sound design, the pacing, the tension. It is expert pacing. And you know, as they make their way, their very circuitous route from New York to D.C., that every place they stop, there's the possibility for something really, really hairy to go down. And it's just a question of how will that happen? And I think he, he uses silence very effectively and also startling sound design really effectively, both extremes. Um, this is a really different to Alex Garland movie. If you love Ex Machina, if you love Annihilation, if, if you liked most of men but couldn't get on board with the ending, um, this never crosses a plane into any kind of surreal supernatural territory. I feel like all of his films, you know, there's, they're a slow sci-fi burn and then eventually it goes into what the fuck territory. This is rooted in a recognizable contemporary reality the whole way through, and it just holds you in its grip the whole way. I thought this was terrifying and tense from a technical perspective, from a tonal perspective, and I am more than okay with not knowing what they're fighting for, because that's part of the point. There's a, there's a scene where they come up on these snipers, and like there's the absurdity of they are pointed at people who are also pointed at them and it's unclear whose side which is on and what they're even shooting at each other for and i think that is the point right there i i disagree though i don't think you can make a movie that's about the divisions in america today and then not give us even you could make up new divisions you could make up other things for them to be divided about but it just become because that is sort of moot yes i grant you that it does that it does come down to the chaos of war i admire the fact that this film um it, it, it reminds me of how, like, uh, when Lizzie Borden made uh, Born in Flames and she wanted to set it in a future dystopia, she just shot in early 80s New York City, which looked bombed out, and mm -hmm. she didn't have to do anything. When Godard wanted to make Alphaville and set it in the future, he just shot it in Paris and the places where, like, they had the, the newest, sleekest architecture, mm -hmm. and he didn't have to do anything. He just did what it did. And so to show... American cities with tent encampments, you know, is not a stretch from what a lot of American cities look like right now. And so I, I, I admire the fact that the movie is sort of showing you how not far from these circumstances that we currently exist in. But I think because they exist in this political void, it takes away the power of understand you know it, it it you know it's like i get it the journalists have to be you know objective and not take a side and just be sort of observant of what's going on but i think for an audience for any kind of war picture that just it it removes a sense of urgency from it so yes stylistically there's always this undercurrent of tension of like every time they get out of the car what's going to happen what could be would be he does build suspense that way i do like the performances there are you know discreet ETE things in the film mm -hmm. that I think work. But overall, I think the lack of a, an even hypothetical point of view undermines what the movie is supposed to do. 
But you can see, though, how people would take even the hypothetical and go, oh, this is his stance and then dismiss the film entirely. I guess, but I think that's cowardly, you know? though. I think I think <laughs> I think the idea of like, well, anybody can just sort of project whatever thing they want on the bad guy and you're the good guy and stuff. That that seems like a cop out to me. It, it does seem like, yes, he's trying to sell tickets, but that that's not necessarily a thing we're supposed to admire artists for doing. No, so I don't think it's selling tickets. I think it's trying to reach the widest possible audience, which means selling tickets. But I don't think that I think his intent is to say, like, like, this could be anybody. This is here, but this could be anybody. And that is a point. Anyway, that was my take on it. And I was, I was good with that. I'm like, that was a really shrewd move on his part. Mm. Okay. And then also, there are moments where it looks incredible, but there's that tension beneath it. Anyway, there's a scene where they're driving through. It's like the a small forest. If, no, there's that. There's like oh. the, the simplicity of this quaint small town that... There's that, but also there's like a moment at night where they're like in a forest and there's like flames, like in slow motion, like little pieces of stuff burning and surrounding the car. And Rob Hardy was a cinematographer. He shoots all of Alex Garland's films. And so it looks wondrous, like something out of like Beast of the Southern Wild, for yeah, example. Or a fucking but, perfume commercial. Like all right, these but little... they're in danger. <laughs> I guess, but I guess, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think there were times where it felt like they were it, it, trying to find sort of beauty in some of these moments. To me, felt like I, 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 it, I don't know. I, I, I think to me, it, it it played more like a cop out than a contradiction in terms that I think he's trying to portray. I don't know. I. I, I just I found myself increasingly frustrated with this film, and I think that it follows a lot of cliches of the general sort of war movie genre. Like you can pretty much guess in the first ten minutes who's going to make it to the end of this movie and who isn't. Um, and I'm usually if I can guess, that's not good because I'm usually like caught unawares by that sort of thing. Is the journey though not literally the destination here? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it is. A, it is a it is a road movie, but it's a road mm -hmm. through a war that is fair that is always vaguely explained, and I found that frustrating. I would say though, if you're looking for a toehold in something that is substantive, there's a lot of January six echoes in the latter part of the film hmm. as far as what's what our capital looks like oh well yeah no no for sure the 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 or, or <laughs> what it may be what it should have looked like on january 6th and what it will probably look like the next time this happens you know like just the the, the, the fortress of it all yeah everyone is great in this kelly spaney if you saw priscilla just unrecognizable yeah. here and and she and kirsten Dunst. i like that relationship and how that evolves i think they accomplish a great deal efficiently with each of those characters and what that dynamic is like and Wagner Mora is just you know charismatic and I recognize that person like the the badass war correspondent adrenaline junkie who's like hooked on putting himself in danger in the next spot in the next spot like that all felt true to me like as a journalist I admired the way they depicted how they I never did anything like that like mm. the closest I came to that kind of thing was covering the oscar red carpet you know? <laughs> i've never been in a war zone before um i admire the hell out of people who have that drive and are willing to sacrifice their safety for you know for coverage but that that was a, a re relatable element for me there is a lovely scene between wagner mora and kaylee spaney where it's kind of the first time that she's going with them to to cover a firefight. And he sort of like has her by the shoulders and he'll like kind of pull her out and she'll take pictures and stuff. And then he'll pull, push her, he'll pull her back against the wall and sort of like, you know, and then later she's doing it on her own. But it's sort of like, it's like teaching someone to swim, you know, or like, mm. you're like okay, now and now back and now and now back, you know. And, yeah. and I thought that was that was a cool little moment and and i did like the fact that steve mckinley uh, henderson is the kind of like character actor who shows up for a couple of scenes and is really great and i i, I glad that, i was glad that he got more to do here he yeah. was one of the leads yeah and the sound design in those moments where she goes out and gets the photo i like how it like stops for a second and lets us see that picture lets us see the grainy black and white lets us see what she's seeing through her lens so that mm -hmm. was kind of cool all right so what's your number then <sighs> You've talked me up, but I'm still going to say like a six and a half. All right. I'll say like 8.8. .8. Okay. It's not my favorite of his. Ex mm -hmm. Machina is still my favorite of his, but mm -hmm. this is second now. So Civil War in theaters this weekend. Will you see it? Let us know.